Vlent day four. Hey there, and welcome back to my channel, everyone. Today we are going from journal entry 39 to journal entry 88 in the Diary of St. Faustina. And just like last time, as soon as I started reading this, I already had a bunch of really cool thoughts on my mind. So here in number 40, uh, toward the end, the last sentence of it, St. Faustina writes, O oh Mary, you are joy, because through you, God descended to earth and into my heart. And at first I saw that and thought, oh, that's beautiful. And then I realized, whoa, that's a perfect demonstration for Protestants of the intercession of saints. Because without Mary saying yes to God, without her giving birth to him, Jesus would not have entered into the world. And so you know, maybe some would argue, well, he could have come a different way or this or that. Fine, maybe he could have, but that's not how it happened and he chose to come through his mother. And that's so beautiful and it, it just shows how Mary brings us closer to Jesus. So that was a good thought. Okay, and continuing on, St. Faustina talks about this vision that she had and basically Jesus said that he was taking her heart away. And then in an instant suddenly I felt that I had no heart in my chest and she was very uneasy and had some trouble with it so on my book I put a little arrow and a question mark because I'm not sure what to think of this some of the things she talks about and the visions that she experiences are things that I've never experienced and I think for all of us they seem very foreign and that they could so easily be made up and so you do have to have a degree of skepticism when somebody is telling you about something similar to this. And what I did love is as I've been reading through the book, she even admits that she struggled with how she was feeling about these visions that she was having and how um, the other sisters thought she was crazy. And so it definitely is something where she realizes that that's not normal or common, I guess would be a better way to phrase it, but it was something that she experienced for whatever reason, but it seems like the reason is to spread this divine mercy message to all of us. But I wanted to share that uh, with anything like this, always think about where you're being led back to. If this is drawing you closer to God, giving you strength in Christ, then I think it is a good thing to keep on reading and diving into. But if it is something that you have such an uneasiness and confusion about, I would stop reading. I would do something else, do a different devotion if you feel that uneasy. But for me, this book is drawing me closer to my faith. And even in this section, she kind of ends uh, in her entry number 42, by saying, you know, with all of this happening in, in her event uh, with her heart, I understood that apart from God, there is no contentment anywhere. To me, it is very evident that throughout this book, you know, she's laying out and processing her thoughts, but it's all solid teaching. Her conclusions are all biblical. So that's one thing that I would say because um, I am always get really interested in the visions that people have of Mary. Quick side note, if you don't know, throughout history, there have been different people who have had visions of Mary that have been made public. Um, Fatima is one of them. I'm sure you've heard of it. Also, what's the other big one? Our Lady Guadalupe. I don't know, was that considered a vision? You know, there's things like that that are the big deals. Uh, another very common one that's a modern day apparition is the Medjugorje visionaries. I've actually been able to see one of the visionaries speak and it was funny because he was going to, they knew that every night at seven o'clock, I think, he would have these visions and speak to Mary, I guess. And then, so you would be able to be there and witness the vision and then he was going to speak afterwards and there may have been a mass as well. So I was living in Pittsburgh at the time and when I heard he was coming to Pittsburgh, I was super excited and I rounded up some of my friends and we went to go to see this visionary 
And it was funny because I was talking to one of my friends recently about this event because it came to my mind and just some of the other things that were happening around the same time that we went to this. But anyway, so we got there late and we ended up missing the vision, which was like supposed to be the cool part, but we were able to hear him speak and that was interesting too. I completely forgot every single thing that he said, so I really can't relay any of that to you, but it was a cool experience to get to see a Medjugorje visionary in person and to read up on it has been very interesting. So there's all kinds of cool stuff like that, but uh, from what I understand, the Catholic Church teaching is that some of these things do become approved by the church as like officially true that this is something of God and, and this is an approved vision. But uh, it's a very rigorous process for that to happen. A lot needs to happen before it can get to such a point. But beyond that, Catholics are not required to believe any of those things. It's not a requirement, it's not a part of being Catholic. If it increases your faith, if it leads you to Jesus, then yes, there are certain ones that are approved. But if it's something that you feel uneasiness about, don't read up on it and that's fine. There's, and e even um, with, with praying the rosary, I think there's this misconception that Catholics are forced to do it. You can still be a total practicing Catholic and not do it. It's just a great devotion that is there for you to strengthen your faith. Just throwing it out there for my Protestant brothers and sisters who may be watching this. All right, going onward here, uh, she brings up how Jesus asked her to paint an image according to the pattern that she saw and then add in the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. So that's the divine mercy image that we know. And it's interesting because when St. Faustina told her confessor about this, he said, that refers to your soul certainly paint God's image in your soul. So he was taking it in more of a symbolic sense, but she was saying, no, it, it seems like he's telling me to literally paint this picture. And after she left, Jesus said that his image was already in her soul, but he wanted her to literally paint it with a brush. As I keep saying, there are so many great bits of knowledge and wisdom in her diary here, but I want to share one last thing that I thought would be worth discussing. In entry 71, St. Faustina talks about how she was supposed to decorate a chapel with flowers. And I guess as she was going there, she picked these really pretty roses and she wanted to decorate the room of a certain person, she says. So I went back because there was a footnote and there was actually this priest that they were assuming was the person that she was referring to. And when this happened and she was about to go decorate their room or area with the flowers, Jesus came to her in a vision and said, my daughter, to whom are you taking these flowers? And just instantly she dropped the flowers and her silence was her reply, she said. And she immediately realized that she had this subtle attachment to the person and she hadn't noticed it before. And so then she went and prayed, but I love what she said at the end, uh, how my heart filled with gratitude for the grace of knowing myself. And then she goes on to pray, O divine son, in your rays, the soul sees the tiniest specks of dust which displease you. I loved that because just the beauty of the gratitude for the grace of knowing myself. I think that it can be easy to forget that to know ourselves is a gift, to know our weaknesses, to know our strengths. And when we see areas where we could be tempted, or areas we, where we are a little bit too attached to people and not attached to Christ and not glorifying God, that we're aware of that. And so we can turn that struggle to prayer, especially as we go through Lent. It is a, the perfect time to be reminded of our sinfulness and the ways in which we struggle and are tempted and the joy in learning what things are difficult for us to resist, what are our temptations, our struggles, our strengths. And that's the thing. There is nothing sinful or wrong about decorating somebody's area but the way that it was kind of leading her down to a potential rabbit hole down the road that could have 
led to other sins, it was good that she caught it at the beginning. So it kind of goes back to her prayer of like the specks of dust that displease you. They seem really small. They're not the biggest things in the world, but they are displeasing to God because if we can't resist in those little moments, eventually down the line, there are going to be bigger temptations in our way. One other thing St. Faustina talks quite a bit about is finding a spiritual director. So my question for you as I end this video is, do you have a spiritual director? And if so, how did you go about finding one? Thanks for watching and subscribe if you'd like to see more Vlent videos in the future. Bye everyone.